Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey there, welcome back. This week, I want to talk to you about the connection between confidence and performance. It's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, meaning what makes you so confident that you can perform under pressure? And how do you not get psyched out when it's time to perform? And what what is that connection between confidence and performance? It got me thinking that a few years ago, I was the strategic planning and investment lead for the non-carbonated portfolio of Coca-Cola. It was one of my favorite professional experiences. And you may be aware of the beverages, vitamin water, smart water, Powerade. Those were the ones that were under my strategic planning domain. And as an integrative agency team, we worked together and we came up with an idea that really blended confidence and performance. So as I was preparing for this episode, I was really thinking back to that, like vitamin water began to work with athletes, musicians, and other high energy personalities. And this idea of you're up, was created. And it's, you know, it's like you've been practicing, you've been working your skill, you've been waiting to be promoted, you've been waiting for it's your turn to speak, it's your turn at bat, and suddenly you go from the waiting to being up. It's on you. So are you able to perform when tapped? And when I work with a client, we go deep on confidence and really get into a lot of the mindset and some of the belief ceilings that may be blocking you to be having that higher level performance that you want. We work through anxiousness, stress, anticipation, and we really get the mind ready to perform. And you might be thinking, so how do you go deep and create that shift and tap into that energy when you need to perform? How do you make sure that there's a wellspring of confidence so that you can perform on command? I mean, on one side, confidence is about mindset, and we're going to go into that a little bit deeper, but it's an internal shift, right? It's thought work. It's really looking at your thinking, and it's preparing and managing the anticipation from when it's your time to be up. The other performance is what we get to see, right? It's the journey along the way, and it's the outcome. And I've read about a lot of athletes and how they prepare for what at times can seem impossible, or even if they're top ranked, they still at times need to meet a very formidable competitor. So how do you perform when you're up? Let's ground on confidence. So first confidence, I look at it as in being two parts. There's confidence and there's self-confidence. Self-confidence comes from knowing and being secure in your abilities. It's having your own back. It's trusting yourself. It's knowing you can work through the emotions, the anxiety, the stress, those feelings that may come up for you and potentially block your performance. It's working through those emotions so that you can frankly get on with your life, right? That's self-confidence. Confidence comes from evidence of previous success. The idea that I've done this before and therefore I know I can do it again. And some people are frequently self-confident while others, the feeling comes and goes. And most people have varying levels of self-confidence depending on your thoughts about your past and your current circumstances. So I've seen so many articles in business journals about how to create confidence through practice. And it's like, yeah, sort of. And for me, the irritating quote is always that, you know, practice makes perfect, right? It's usually some expert telling you that if you work hard and practice the thing, take the action, even you can do it, even if it's in front of an audience, you can do it. And that you can practice and practice and practice and you can outsmart your your uh, your innate abilities and, you know, increase your talents and your attitude. But they completely omit the mindset element, right? You can't just keep taking the action. You have to look at your mind. 
And evidence and, and practice is important, but you have to believe. You have to work on the mindset and you and get into belief. And then I've also read that um, some of these experts also saying, like, if you just produce work continually, eventually you'll receive positive feedback from your leadership and you'll see how valuable you are and that you can be more self-confident. Yeah, no, you can't outsource your self-confidence. You can't fix your self-confidence solely by accomplishing something. Again, that's the confidence side. Remember that self-confidence comes from being secure in your mindset and handling the negative emotions, thinking through how you may feel and choosing again. Confidence is the part that comes from practice, evidence, and repetition. So many people have the misconception that confidence is inborn and that you don't, if you don't have it at an early age, you're never going to have it. In reality, confidence, yeah, it is a skill that it can be learned much like any technical skills, but it is developed through focus, effort, repetition, and looking at your thoughts. So one piece of mindset work when you're looking to create confidence is how can you ask yourself better questions? How can you change that internal dialogue? Asking yourself sort of like, how can I accomplish this task? Or why wouldn't I succeed? Or how can I focus my strengths on this? Or why is it possible that I can succeed here, right? You want to be thinking, what do I need to be thinking in order to stay confident? When you ask a better question of yourself, your brain is going to start giving you a better answer. Now I want to look at the performance side of the comparison. So performance, you've practiced, you've studied, and you want that win so bad, the promotion, the accolade, the acknowledgement, that you fast forward and you skip to the end, the result, the winning and the victory. And the problem there is that you've become focused on winning rather than performing your best. Confidence and performance are like peas and carrots. Think back to a time when you didn't have confidence in yourself. You may have gotten caught in a vicious cycle of low confidence and low performance. Negative thinking will lead to poor performance, which then will lead you to more negative thinking, which then gives you even more poor performance. And until your confidence can get so low that you don't even want to participate. This downward spiral starts with that period of poor performance because again, you were thinking on the final result and not managing your mind for the journey along the way. You jumped the outcome. And look, I'm not saying that you always have to be successful, but the mindset journey requires that you practice your thoughts and skills and then practice the thinking that, you know what, if I win or lose, I've given it my all. You go into the performance staying present. There's definitely times where we do future self work and you really think through all the pieces, all the journeys, all the plays, all the pivots, and you do that and you really think about the other side. Yes, that future self work is so important. But when you're in the performance, you have to stay present. Otherwise, you're jumping to the end and you're not aware of what might be popping up along the way. Let me tell you a little story. I'm usually a pretty decent public speaker. I can usually be thrown at, you know, thrown the ball and be like, okay, go perform. You're up. It's not usually a problem. I'm not saying I don't get nervous. I'm just saying that I can usually manage my brain, manage my performance, think it through and perform. But there is a time in my career where I was in a really intense, one would say toxic and unsupported environment. There were sharp elbows everywhere. And my boss said that she loved to see us compete against each other. She loved it. She, she thought it was healthy that we were competitive and thought it added to better strategic outcomes. <laughs> my orientation has always been that I compete against myself. I compete against my last performance. When I compete against myself, people are looking to help and collaborate with me. When I compete against others, I've now made frenemies of people and they're not going to necessarily look to collaborate with me. That whole idea of my value my orientation didn't fly in this department. So it should have been enough for me to know right then that I was in a values misalignment and I needed to move on. But I was young. This is what you do when you don't know better. So I was having to give a presentation, a large company meeting. 
And she wanted me to be perfectly scripted, meaning memorized. And that's fine without a teleprompter, a little bit harder, but okay, I can do that. However, I'm literally about to walk on stage and she's still handing me pieces of paper being like, make sure you say this and make sure you say that and make sure you add this in. How can you be perfectly scripted and still be adding content and still be yourself, right? Her last words as I was walking on stage were, you better nail this. (laughs) And then there she was in the front row of the auditorium, mouthing words, waving her hands, commenting. Look, my result, yeah, it wasn't my best. Definitely was not my best. Was, did I bomb it? No. But was it, did I walk off that stage being like I nailed it? No. And look, in all honesty, I don't know many people that would be able to perform under that, but I'm sure there are plenty of people that do because they get heckled from the audience and they're still able to perform. Then I had to take the presentation on the road. And I started to become my own worst enemy because each time before I would leave, she would say, you better do better than last time. (laughs) So again, my mindset wasn't primed for the journey. I wasn't thinking about, you know, how to work through this. I was probably focusing on my disdain for her and the experience versus practicing and hitting the points along the way and what to say if someone makes a comment and how to be in that pivot. That is the performance piece, right? It's the mindset piece and the performance piece. I just wanted it to be over. So when your mindset isn't primed for the journey, the bully, the bumps and the pivots, you don't have a chance of performing and finding that success and that end result that you're going for. All right. The way I like to think about confidence and performance is a couple of things, and I'm going to take you through a few steps. So one, as I said before, the first step is reminding yourself that self-confidence is not about your achievements, but confidence is. And again, here's where it gets a little tricky. Looking back is only about providing you evidence, and this past evidence can absolutely help you rewire your brain. Looking at past experiences and successes as proof that you've done something before and that you can do it again. It's possible. So reviewing your past victories and remember you've co- you've accomplished things before in your life will help. And it's just a bit of a boost that can help you move leaps and bounds when you're learning how to gain new confidence in an area. This, this allows your mind to start thinking positively. If you gave an impactful presentation in your company a few months ago, well, why wouldn't you be able to complete your next project in like some level of allotted time and make the timelines? Relishing in the moments of pride can definitely help you see that you can do it again. This is about, you know, the more you do this, the faster and easier it will be to get there. The second thing I want you to think about is that if you don't have any achievements in this area yet, then building self-confidence is about building the belief that you already have what you need to get through the challenge. While you may not have done this before, or you have limited knowledge or experience, you believe that you can work through it, right? You can, you can get through the experience because you can manage your emotions. And when you're managing your emotions, you're able to stay focused prefrontal cortex, right? This is how it works. When you're managing the emotions, the primitive brain is going to calm down and allow your prefrontal cortex, the strategic part of your brain to be thinking again. So you have to do this from your thoughts. That idea of self-confidence is from your thoughts, not your external achievements. And next, when you're thinking about your performance, it's about the team, not the individual. So are you going to pitch that business? Are you all working towards your Q3 launch? Do you have a coach, a mentor, or a peer group to help you get there? The teams and your colleagues are doing great things together. Who's on your team? And then I want you to think about the now, not just the outcome. Again, this is about performance in the moment. I want, I know you want to win, but in the moment, it's about doing the thing, not fast forwarding to the outcome where if you're doing that, it may knock you off course. We get better when we look at the moments along the way. The next thing is that preparation matters more than go time or the actual competition. Preparation is the work that you did to get here. It's not about the 20 minutes in the job interview or the 60 minute presentation. That's go time. 
Preparation is about doing the work and then setting your mindset to think, I've done everything I can. Win or lose, I can live with the results. And this is so important and it's not defeatist. It's saying that you are prepared and let's go. Now I'm up. This is, this is knowing that your training will kick in for you. And lastly, you get ready by tapping into mindset. Go to a quiet place. What I did subsequently after that um, incident that I had with that boss is I always made sure before a presentation that I had a moment. It might've been the bathroom stall. It might've been in the hallway, but I just had a moment to center in. And therefore I was less impacted by what was going on around me in the audience because I had done my prep work. Envision the run of show. Envision the interview, see the stage, see the questions that are being asked to you, see yourself envisioning along the way, answering the question, or if you're in a group presentation, passing it to a colleague so who is better suited to answer that particular question. Imagine yourself connecting with the interviewer, the client, connect on the qualities that you want to bring into this experience, clarity, confidence, focus, determination, maybe even some fun. We all have to be ready for something. And when you really look at confidence and performance, you can get ready. You can then give it your all and release the outcome so that you can stay present during the journey. Be in your excellence, be in your craft. Okay, my friends, that is what I have for you this week. And if you're looking for support on performance, on confidence, I'd love to help you. I'm going to put the details of how to reach me and contact me in the show notes. Okay, friends, I appreciate you so much and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.